Time for our Culture Maker segment, Mike. Nike Terminator Highs. That's a phenomenal shoe right there. Um, I, I love the tiger print, um, you know, on, on the outside right there. The blue hits off well. It's just perfectly designed, man. I love the slim and husky. You, you almost don't want to wear it. Get all of your HBCU sports and culture news by tuning in to HBCU Huddle with CJ Hurt and Mike Wallace. New episodes drop every Thursday on GrindCityMedia.com, YouTube, and Spotify. <laughs> At Mountain Dew, we'd like to remind you that the world as we know it would not exist without the number zero. Which is why, at Mountain Dew, we'd like to recognize the number zero for making Mountain Dew Zero Sugar possible. Even with no sugar, it packs all of the bold citrus kick Dew Nation knows and loves. It's so good, you have no reason not to try it. As in zero. Get it? Crack open an ice-cold Mountain Dew Zero Sugar. It's zero sugar. All do. Take your fandom to the next level with the official Grizzlies app. Go all access and behind the scenes. It's got to be heavy defense. That's where it starts for us. Personalized to where you are and who you are. Get easy access to ticketing, the game day guide, and your own app customization right at your fingertips. Upgrade your experience and download the Grizzlies app today. Are you superstitious at all? Yes. I am a don't sit your purse on the ground because you'll never have any money type superstitious. I am a don't split the pole type superstitious. Mm. Step on a crack, you'll break your mother's back superstitious. I used to try and do that all the time. Her back never broke. So. Tune in to the Jessica Benson Show with CJ Hurt live every weekday at 8 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Let's face it, there's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board, a class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and makes the competition speechless. Greatness starts here with a built Ford Tough F-150 at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Class is full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR. Our top three teams in the Southeastern Conference. CJ, your top three in the SEC. Uga and Bama. And then I was really, really impressed by what Tennessee was able to do against Texas A&M. So I'll put t- Tennessee third. I'm a sucker for a good tater toter. You know I like tater toters in Tennessee Toasted Tater. The Odds Couple with Rob Fisher, Lang Whitaker, John Roser, and CJ Hurt live Thursdays at 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Grizzlies fans know it's the team that gives you the edge. Big River Steel does too. That's why we're looking for team members to help us reshape the steel industry for a more sustainable tomorrow. Our edge starts with you at www.bigriversteel.com backslash join to join our dash team. That's www.bigriversteel.com backslash join to join our dash team. We're going to start with Rookie of the Year odds. For my number three, mm-hmm. I went I'd be surprised with, if we don't have the same three, just maybe in different order. I don't know. We might be a little different. I went with Asar Thompson because we had Jaden Ivey last year and the commercial showed a million times on TV last year. So I had to have a piston in my top three. Wow. Troy Pistons are going to be so good this year. <laughs> Thank you. IMHO with Lang Whitaker and me, Kelsey Wright Johnson, on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. It's more fun to be there live to see the Memphis Grizzlies hit the court all season long. From the electricity and FedEx Forum to the highlight reel plays, there's nothing quite like Grizzlies basketball. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies, Ticketmaster gets you in with a huge selection of seats. So get off the couch and into the stands while you still can. Score tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. That's Ticketmaster.com. 
Elevate your hotel experience in the heart of downtown Memphis at the West End Memphis Beale Street. Our AAA Four Diamond Hotel boasts spacious guest rooms and suites, refreshed meeting space, upscale dining, and more. Just steps away from the sights and sounds of Beale Street, FedEx Forum, and the Memphis Rock and Soul Museum. After a full day of work or play, retreat to your hotel room or suite featuring luxury bedding, a contemporary bathroom, a spacious workstation, complimentary coffee, and a flat screen TV. During downtime, you can take advantage of perks such as our on-site fitness center, 24-hour business center, and upscale dining at Penny's Nitty Gritty. On your next visit to downtown Memphis, make the West End Memphis Beale Street Hotel your home away from home. Live from downtown Memphis, this is the Chris Vernon Show, presented by Caesar Sportsbook on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Now, here's your host, Chris Vernon. It is the Wednesday, November 1st, 2023 edition of the show. I am not here as the invisible man. Oh, there I am. We got a lot of stuff to get through on the show today. Grizzlies with their 0-4 record are taking their talents on the road. We'll be playing in Utah tonight. Followed by two against the Portland Trailblazers. Jessica Benson's going to join us in studio. She does on Wednesdays. Roser's got his NFL notes because we were packed up yesterday. Let's do it. Turn it up. Everybody's having a good day. All right. We got a bunch of stuff to get to. Uh, Grizzlies are going to be back in action tonight. At least, luckily, not the full West Coast experience as they were playing in Utah. So the game will be on at 8 o'clock instead of 7 o'clock. And hopefully, everything will be in working order for the game. And if it's not, don't at me. Don't put me in your mentions. If a Bally app ain't working, I'm sorry, but I can't just go turn it on. I got nothing to do with the tech. And if I was at home, I'd be mad too. And so I don't want to be mad. Nobody wants to be mad. And so hopefully it all works out tonight and everybody can watch the game against the Utah Jazz. Before I get to anything, I welcome John Roser to the show. John Roser, a.k.a. the Cologne Ranger, the body frame bandits in your sack. A.k.a. Johnny Backpole, Under America, a.k.a. the Grim Roser. John Asparagus, Johnny Net Carb, John Lance, John Young, did Yogi Roser? Did did you tell uh, the Bally's? Did you tell them? Have you guys? Have, have you tried unplugging it and plugging it back in? Yes, I, evidently. So I was talking to our uh, the Bally social media uh, department at the game, and obviously, hellacious for him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Can't imagine yeah, what man. his ads look like. Man. Evidently, it was the Pacers, the Pelicans, the Hawks, and the Grizzlies. 
All of those had had, so had, 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 had app issues. Yeah. yeah. So the team, the all, yeah, all, of their, all of their teams. <laughs> I don't know. So the whole system, si- the whole system. <laughs> yeah, all of it. I don't know. I don't know. But hopefully, uh, gonna be all fine by this evening when they are playing against the Utah Jazz. If not, I will find a way to watch it, be able to chronicle it for you tomorrow. Um, so. They are one of the very few teams that I have not seen yet. I haven't seen a Utah game yet. Not like I would go out of my way to seek them out particularly anyway, but um, they have started off much like the Grizzlies. Uh, I, I find them, they're one and three, but I think it's really hard to gauge them because we talk about the Grizzlies where it's like, hey, you come into the season, you're already down, guys, and then you lose Kennard, then you lose Aldama, you're going to be shorthanded. And the worst thing is to be playing good to pretty good, to great teams and play four games in six nights, including a back to back. Like, it's just, it's a bad spot to be in. And it's one of the reasons that. I think a lot of people are being able to hang on to hope, say, hey, get a couple more guys and then hopefully get a little break in the action and this will get better, that it is not necessarily indicative of how this is going to go and that this is going to be an utter disaster until John Morant is able to come and save the day. Um, I think that... Obviously, the, the 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 Wizards one is the only one that I have been mad about thus far. Um, they could have, certainly, uh, when they got down two against the Dallas Mavericks, I, I thought they were flipping that game. And not only did they not flip that game, they got run out the rest of the way. Um, you know, Denver, I, I actually left the arena really happy that they had played how they had and that I thought, you know what, like, keep on pressing on, and they're on to something. And then the, the Wizards thing was a step a setback, and then gave up 125 to the Mavs and got 24 threes knocked down on them. Um, I've talked to you a lot about the, the playing the games on paper and, like, those shot quality scores. The, it, what I would tell you is, based on the shots they have taken and the, and the people that have taken those shots versus the teams and the shots the teams have taken and the players that have taken those shots, th- this has been uh, much more competitive. And they do have, you know, they, they've, they've won in those departments. And so they chronicle. It's kind of crazy when you go down, like, the list. What they do is they chronicle, like, it's got, like, your, your real record, your shot quality record and then like the difference and i mean it is extreme in terms of the outcomes that have taken place and so there's some luck that's in there right because like teams aren't typically gonna like the mavs did knock down 24 of 49 threes against you and so there are some things to hang on to like those shot quality scores are much much better than the scores have been thus far so what you hope is what they preach all the time which is keep on Keep on, keep on, keep on doing the same things and that trust the process as it were and the results will come, right? Like they, if, if you keep on doing these things that over the long haul, over 82 games, if you keep on doing these things that you're not going to, you're going to run into, you're going to run into some bad luck, you're going to run into some good luck, but, but generally if you can play like this, you are going to be successful. You are going to have good outcomes a lot more often than you're going to have bad outcomes. And they've run into some buzz saws so far, for sure. Now, Utah is a really hard one to gauge because, much like the Grizzlies, they it's almost identical except for the fact that they played on Monday night. Well, no, it's actually identical. They have had the exact same schedule as the Grizzlies, now that I look at it. Exact same. Wednesday home, uh, Wednesday home opener. Uh, Friday they actually played at home. Uh, well, that's like actually like that's the Grizzlies. That's exactly like the Grizzlies. Then a two-game road trip, the first of which was a back-to-back. And then they played Monday night. It's the exact same schedule as the Grizzlies. Yeah. Poor results. One, they're one and three. 
in those games. Also, much like the Grizzlies, played teams that were – I mean, they played all playoff teams. They didn't even get a Washington break. They played Sacramento at home. Then they played the Clippers at home. And that's the game they won by two. Mm-hmm. And then they had to go the second half of back-to-back, went to Phoenix, and got whacked. And then on Monday night played against Denver and actually played rather well against Denver. And so their one and three record is not bad, honestly, considering the fact that much like the Grizzlies, they had four games in the first six days. When you open on a Wednesday and you've already played four games by the time you get to Monday night, that is treacherous to start yeah. the season. And they're, you know, they got to figure some things out too. They've got returning players, but they've also got to figure some things out as well because, you know, they, they were the story of the season last season for the first half of the season for sure. And then, you know, they moved off of some guys, uh, not the least of which was Mike Conley, who was a part of that. Um, and now they are starting uh, Clarkson at point guard. Like, their backcourt is Clarkson, and now they're starting Taylor Horton Tucker. And then uh, their other starters are John Collins and Markinen and uh, Walker Kessler, who just had a – actually, his game against Denver was enormous. He had 22-13 and 13 against Denver. That's pretty damn good. He's 10 of 11 from the field. And if you haven't noticed, we're small. Yes. Right. Uh, off the bench, they bring Olenek, Sexton, uh, Abaji, who they drafted last year, and then the rookie that we loved in summer league, uh, Keontae George, a kid out of Baylor who uh, struggled a little bit so far. But oh, and Chris Dunn has gotten some minutes for them as well. Uh, so I mean, look, they got they got like a bunch of like good players, right? Yeah. And like you said, their schedule's been brutal. And their schedule has they been played, brutal. They so play better not, teams. Like this will be a big relief as compared to the teams that they have played thus far. Yeah. Uh, but they ended up 1-3. and three. The Grizzlies probably should be 1-3 and three with their schedule right now. Instead, they're 0-4. But the Grizzlies got to get a win, right? Like, you got you to break through sooner or later. And what I'm saying is this team, this first one is much different than the next two because that Portland team has just not performed at all. Um, they've got to win, but... That team is not uh, – they're, they're still throwing it together, too. They're learning. You know, they're, the point guard's learning. You know, they've got new players that have never played together before in, in a lot of different spots. And so this team, like, they've got guys that have played together. They're really only adding – I mean, Horton Tucker was on that team last year. They're adding Collins to the mix um, on their team. And obviously Markinen, who was an all-star last year, uh, all NBA level player has been playing at that level as well. Yeah. I mean, against Denver at 27 and 14 and tough matchup for sure. Uh, so I don't look, I said at worst, you got to go two and three at worst on this road trip. If you drop this one, then you got to get the two Portland ones, but you can't go on this Utah, Portland, Portland trip after you're down. Oh, four already. And, come back home being one in five or one in six after this like it's if a you're real looking, possibility but i'm but saying if you're looking at the schedule that the, like you gotta get if you can't get these wins where are you getting wins yeah i think tonight's gonna be tough i do i but think where tonight's are you getting wins really tough. i um, look i would i would hate this game if they weren't oh and four when you're oh and four you play differently yeah you just do, right? Those those random regular season games, a random regular season game in Utah, and maybe I'll end up not being right about this, but a random regular season game in Utah is typically like one of those where it's like, uh, for the better part of a decade, um, there have been a couple of times, Quinn had a couple of those like really good years, yeah, uh, you know, where those were like dog fights and whatever, but... In, in a lot of those years, it's been one of those, all right, if you drop it, you drop it. And tough place to play, crowds yeah. on top of you, you know. So you try to be competitive, but um, if you drop it, you drop it, right? It's not the end of the world. And I just think there's so much, the, the stakes end up being so much bigger yeah. 
yeah. when you haven't won a game yet because now it feels like we have to win a game, right? You start playing that game, I think 0-4, this is what I think will happen. You play at a different intensity than if you're 2-3. and three. You play at a different intensity than if you're 3-2. and two. You play at a different intensity than if you're 5-0 and oh or 4-1. and one. Like, I think you... You're throwing it out there, and it's like, yo, like this yeah. matters to us. We ain't trying to drop to zero and five, and so you give this home run effort. I would hope these would hope. these next five games that you have, um, the three game road trip and the two at home. You, I mean, it it might be one of those you need to go three and two, four and one in them. Yes, because after that, your next four games, three of them on the road at Clippers, at Lakers, at Spurs, Celtics. Yeah, and you know what? I resent <laughs> I resent the hell out of him because obviously I've had to go to Halloween parties uh, the last, well, Sunday night, went to one. Uh, Saturday night, there was a Halloween thing uh, that I had to take my son to. So Saturday, Sunday, because some people did the stuff on the weekends, and then Monday night we had the game, and then last night I was at a Halloween thing because obviously they had to go out trick-or-treating. And so I'm around a bunch of adults, and all I had to talk about, I mean, all I had to talk about was the Grizzlies, right? And it's like, oh, man, well, you think we're going to be okay? 0-4, what do you think about Biombo? Uh, what the hell happened with the Steven injury? Uh, how many more games is it until Ja comes back? You know, like all this kind of stuff. And it's like, I, I resent it. I, I certainly wish they were not 0-4. Um, I feel like I have the same conversation a thousand times. Um, but it seems to me, because I know a lot of people that are uh, Grizzlies fans, obviously. Um, I think most people at this point, especially with the way the season has started, I think most people, this might, they like, you have to recalibrate all this right now. Everybody could sign up for 10 and 15 through the first 25 games. They would actually take that. Yes. What do you say? Yeah. 10 and 15 would be great. You would take 10 and 15. If I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm making the deal right now. The more and more I've looked at the schedule, I think that, I think that like 8 and 17 is probably more likely or 7 and 19 might be more likely. Dude, it is. Dude, it's not easy. No. I mean, even after that Celtics game, it's Houston, whatever, but it's Phoenix, it's Minnesota, Dallas, Phoenix, Dallas. Like, mm. there's a Jazz game and a Rockets game sprinkled in those two. But, like, dude, that is. I mean, you should have Santi back. Maybe. Who knows what's going on with that? That was the other thing last night. I, I, you know, I, I said uh, Rose out tonight, which I'm not so sure is a bad thing considering the struggles Derek has had to start this season. We love Derek Rose. We love Derek Rose. This has been hard to watch. Yeah, it's not, hard uh, to watch. It's uh, he's a third point guard. Hard now, to watch. Yeah, and you're having him play backup point guard minutes. That's right. And I think he looks around and goes, "These guys suck. I might as well shoot it." And he's not making anything. Yeah. So he had a little run in the tough. Denver game. Had a little run in that's the right. Denver game. It's spurts. Was, yeah, a little spurt. Spurts. Yeah. Um. But Canard's back. That's great. I don't know if anybody saw his Instagram. Great uh, costume. Yesterday he had, uh, he dressed up like a uh, Galifianakis from The Hangover, and he had Carlos yeah, hanging over baby him. Carlos. It's always a winner. Yes. Uh, always a winning. Halloween costume. Uh, but anyway, he's back after uh, got a little scrambled brain uh, concussion, and he is going to be playing against the Utah Jazz. Uh, should play very well. You know they love their white guys there. So hopefully he'll feel uh, like they're cheering for him. Yeah. They, they, might, they might just mistakenly cheer for him yeah. when he knocks down a three. Um, then we have uh, Santi still out. And so I did get some of that over the course of the last couple of days. It's like, I thought he said Santi was going to be all right. And I was like, he did. He's like, they're terrible about injuries. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
What do you want me to say? I mean, I don't like the way they, it, it's handled. It, 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 there's so little clarity. Yeah. They, like, I, and they're not going to change it, just, it. So it's like you're just like there's you're complaining just, to the air. I know. There's just always, but there is. I totally understand fans being frustrated yeah. about the lack of clarity when it comes to injuries. It's annoying. And especially when it's like, hey, this guy sprained his ankle day to day. I've had a sprained ankle. You've had a sprained ankle, right? Like, they don't say if it's grade one. They don't say it's grade two. They don't say, like, it's like, okay, so the guy sprained his ankle. And if you say, like, he's going to be okay, and it made it sound like he's going to be available by the weekend because I've sprained my ankle like a thousand times you have to everybody we've all had a bunch of sprained ankles right and the only way it's longer than a week you is ice if it's it bad you ice it you ice it like sprained ankles heal and they yeah. heal pretty fast so like what is what, what what are we doing here like was it a grade two grade three is this like one of those jaw ones from a while back because it was like not a big deal or seemingly not a big deal and we're like going on a week, yeah, of the guy being out. Like that ain't a sp- that ain't a sprained ankle. Is it a? But you didn't say it was a grade whatever, and you didn't say it was a high ankle sprain. So like, what is going on? I don't understand. Is it, it might be a bad sprained ankle, but then why was it made to sound like he's gonna be okay? And obviously he's doing the treatment, whatever. Because I mean, I've been around this for twenty something years. I've but a bunch of guys that have sprained their ankles. Yeah, the if it's recovery time for uh, I turn my ankle in practice is not a week. No. If it's so what's going on? If it's if it's a simple sprain like your basic sprain, it's like dude, yeah, maybe a week. It may be one week exactly. But if it's worse than that. Then it can be longer than a week. But they made it sound like yeah, yeah it's just he a sprained his ankle. He turned yeah, his like ankle it's just a basic right? old ankle sprain, like yeah. I've seen guys play the next night. Yeah. But you know I, how I, they I, are. I just don't get it. Well, here's the thing. Even if he plays Friday night, he ain't going to play Saturday night. I know. <laughs> we know how that goes. I don't get it. I, I, I don't know what's going on with the dude. But they need him. Especially because uh, he's taller than 6'8". And we got one guy. Yes. Also something he will do. We literally do. have one player over 6'8". Also something he will do. and can, he, can, he, can sh- he will shoot. He is a willing person who will try to score the ball. Yes. And he can shoot. Yes. He had a good summer playing for Spain. He for played sure. Well. Santi played really well. Played good summer. in preseason. Yeah. After that for the first dud, the rest of them were good. Yeah. And he had some nice games yeah. there. I mean, well, the, the Milwaukee announcer is in love with him. Marquise uh, Johnson. Marcus Johnson. He loved him. So I just don't understand. I don't understand what, what what is going on with that, but I'm glad that Kennard is back because you need to just start getting more rotation guys back in the mix that they can play. Um, and, again, it's not going to be easy. It's never an easy game in Utah. Never. Even when they've been terrible, it's never been an easy game no. to win. Um, they do have a good crowd. They do have uh, a crowd that's typically on top of you, and it is not easy to breathe. It is a different environment. There's no question. It's different when you're playing there, especially when you're running up and down the court. Uh, I can only imagine because even us hiking to uh, hiking around there um, because we couldn't figure out where things were, even though it was rather condensed. Uh, it, it get to you after you're walking for a long time downtown Salt Lake City. But God, it was beautiful. That place is beautiful, man. Beautiful. Yes. You're just walking through downtown, there's friggin' like snow capped mountains in the background. No, it's amazing. So, Salt Lake City's very so nice. nice. So Salt Lake nice. City is very nice. Not to mention everything downtown is just clean as hell. Yes. Too cold for bums. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody out there. Ain't nobody hassling you. It is you. cold, man. It's great. It's one of the very few American cities that I've been to in the last year where I didn't get like accosted. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I love the air, too. I love the altitude. I loved it. Yes. It's clean. The yes. air is so clean. Yes. Yes. It's a nice, it's a nice place, man. It's a yeah. nice place. Salt Lake City is very nice. Right? But I do think, look, I think that 
This is one of those where you would look at it, and in a typical Grizzly season, they would go, oh, okay, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll get this win in Utah, or just not think that much about it. Whereas, you know, you try to get up, you know, for a Lakers game. You try to get up for a Phoenix yeah. game. You try to get up for some of these other games. And it's like you wouldn't even think that much about it, especially when you look and you go, it's, you know, Taylor Horton Tucker and Jordan Clarkson. And, like, yeah, they're, I mean, they're not supposed to be a playoff team. No, they're not. Okay. But it's uh, this, this is. They're kind of uh, at an in-between. It's still right an easy. Um, no, it's not easy. But I'm saying yeah. I think you should have a home run effort. You should. Yes. Being 0 and 4. Because you can't be stacking these things up. Yeah. Right? The more you stack up, the worse it gets to get to the number that we were even talking about, right? Basically, if you, right now, with what we just explained, yeah. you would have to go 10 and 11. That gets you to, you went 10 and 11 from this point on, you would get to, you would get to 10 and 15 by the time you give Morant back. That's not crazy. Mm, it might be with their schedule. It might be with the schedule. List off the 21. All right. I'll, I'll mark down. I'll mark. Hey, I'll mark down. Because, and again, it's hard because we don't know. We don't, we don't know the other, uh, the other team's schedule situation. You're right. Yeah. I'm not going too in depth on right, this. Right. Where it's like there may be three in. Uh, you know, five nights, or it might be the end of a road right. trip for them. Or we're just gonna so take it face value. You're hopefully getting a couple of breaks yeah. on schedule. And the other thing is this: you also we take these and we look at them. This was a fool's errand last year, as you know, because in the end, you don't know who you have and you don't know who they have. Right. And by the way, I will say I am taking into consideration. Bismack Biombo's massive impact oh, after yeah, tonight. Yeah, yeah, okay, of course, yes, Bismack Biombo. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Okay. Who averaged almost 11 rebounds, four blocks, and four offensive rebounds per 36 minutes. Look, all I'll say about Bismack Biombo per 36. All I'll say, what's he gonna screw up? <laughs> You're 0 and 4. What are you gonna do? What, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Games? All right. Look, here's a, and this is why I kept telling people. People were asking me, they were like, what do you think about Biombo? And I said, look, I don't care what he does. The guy knows how to contribute to winning in the ways that they need somebody to contribute to winning, which is know your role, rebound, protect the rim. Most importantly, take the attention of the biggest guy on the court away from Jaron. Yeah. That's it. I love Tillman. They don't care about Tillman. No, they don't. And if I have to see Xavier Tillman take more threes, I'm, I may lose my mind. Well, that's one thing. I love Tillman. That's but, what, but, that's, but that's one thing you know. He now, right? Can pluck him off the bench. There's, well, there's also, and he's also not uh, acting as a floor spacer right. within the offense. Biombo's he's strictly paint guy. Poor man, Steve-O. Yeah. You know, you're in the paint. You are helping block shots and protect the rim, grabbing defensive and offensive rebounds, yes. and getting put backs. And so it, here's it, what I'm saying. Yes. On the, when I'm talking about the size thing, the biggest guy on the court can't also be shading Jaron as well. And if you can be the guy that when the shot goes up, I go to the boards, I have to be boxed out. You got to pay attention to me. Yes. Tillman six seven. I, I don't even like, think it's also just that. It's it, it it is that, but it's also like man, you get now you'll have Xavier Tillman playing against the other teams too. For sure. And like when you get Santi back, then maybe you have like Zaire and those guys playing against the other teams too, which makes you a little bit deeper, you know. Um, twenty one, twenty one. That's how right. many games you're at Utah tonight. When? At Portland. When? At Portland. Win. I say they win all You're three of these. You're saying they're going to win all yes. three. Okay. Uh, home against Miami. I, I, I'll say loss. Loss. Home against Utah. Win. At the Clippers. Loss. At the Lakers. Loss. At Spurs. Win. Home against Boston on a back-to-back. -back. Uh, it's at San Antonio, then home right, against we'll Boston. We'll give them a loss. Bro, they never beat Boston anyways. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's Mar Mar they, they could have two weeks off. They probably wouldn't beat Boston. But, but Marcus, Marcus Smart, Smart revenge game. Yeah, it is a Marcus Smart revenge game. Uh, at Houston. Win. Phoenix at home. 
Uh, By the way, that's Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. That's 4 o'clock. Win. <laughs> I'm going to give him a wild win on a 4 o'clock weird post-Thanksgiving game. That is so strange. That which, which of course, o'clock. Durant and Beal will both sit out. And probably Booker, too. Yeah. <laughs> None of them will play. Uh, home against Minnesota. Um, I'll say loss. Home against Utah. Man, we're knocking out these Jazz games early. I'll say win. At Dallas. Loss. At Phoenix. Loss. Home against Dallas. Loss. At Houston. I mean, they're, look, they're 9-1 and one with Luka. So we need a Luka missed game right. in there. Uh, what? At Houston. Win. Versus Houston. Win. At Oklahoma City. Loss. Those are your games. Can't be. That's till what? December 19th at New Orleans? Well, I somehow had 10 to 9 on that. Mm, one, two, three. <laughs> that's only, We've already played four. It's only 19 games. <laughs> Did I miss one on I don't know. You missed two. I'm going right down the schedule. You missed two. Utah, Portland, Portland, Miami, Utah, Clippers, Lakers, Spurs, Celtics, Rockets, Suns, Wolves, Jazz, Mavs, Suns, Mavs, Rockets, Rockets, Thunder. So I must have missed two. So anyway, I I already had him at ten. I think that is best outlook possible, though. I had him at 10. I'm, I am hopeful that Santi coming back will what, help what, fix what a lot. When did I give? I did not give them a win over any. First of all, they're zero and three at home, so you expect them. I don't care if they're playing bad teams. You're expecting them to go three and zero on the road. But I didn't give them any wins against anybody good. Right, but you also gave them win. You gave them a win against Phoenix. That's it. The day after Thanksgiving at four. But you're also expecting them to go undefeated against every bad team. But I'm also expecting them to go totally defeated against anybody that was worth a crap. Except Phoenix. One game. So then flip-flop and give them a loss to a bad team, too, to even it out. Do I give them a win over a good team? You did against Phoenix. They don't win one game? Okay, even then I got them ten. You said at San Antonio they'd win, too. Yes, they're not any good. Yeah, and they're also going to beat some of those good teams. I hope. I think they could beat Miami next they're, week. They're, Miami, they're, Miami does not care about the regular season. Miami has not been good all right. so far. Look, mark my words. They will have 10 wins out of the first 25 games. I hope games. they do, man. They will. I hope they do. I just marked it down. I gave them wins over bad teams and... No, no wins over good teams, I except do. for one, which you go one, which obviously cut you to the core because Kevin Durant got the ball ripped from him like a child to lose the game last night against Keldon Johnson. And so it bothers you to no end no, that I'm doesn't. saying that you would have to watch Kevin Durant lose a four o'clock game on get... Black Friday. You I, don't, you don't come seen, to FedEx I... Forum on Black Friday and walk out alive. No way. No way. It's a tough one. It's also, I think, a tournament game. Is that the tournament? Is that the in-season oh, tournament st- game? And, and with, with raised stakes? Yeah. You're also not taking into consideration Biombo. Can tell. I do. I think, the UF. No, I think Santi's gonna make a difference whenever he comes back. Uh, I do uh, believe Santi that. Santi Biombo and Kennard gives you three guys to play, so you don't have to play guys that can't. Yeah. Help you and win. You, and you saw him completely go away from Laravia in the second half on Monday night. Like he just couldn't do it anymore. They're gonna get going. I believe Marcus Smart's tweet. I think they're gonna get going too. I do believe them. They're gonna get ten. They're going to get 10, 10, 10 wins out yeah. of those first Marcus 25. Smart loves it. He loves I it. Think, I think they will be. It's adversity. Yeah, I think they're 10 and 20. I think they're 10 and 15 at worst. And you said you'd take that. Hell yeah, I'd take it. 10 and 15 does not keep you out of it. There are so many of these teams that are going to be just 
within two games, a game or two. Of, I mean, like I think the, Denver, Boston, and who else have not taken a loss? And by the way, they've only played like Boston somehow. Grizzlies are going to play their fifth game tonight. They haven't. I don't think the Boston's even played their fourth. Yeah, it all evens out in the end. They it all, all play evens 82. out. Uh, Boston, Denver, Dallas are the only undefeated teams. And they played. Uh, Bo- and Denver's played four. Denver's played four. Dallas has played three. Boston has played three. Right. Do they all play tonight? Three. Denver, three. You- three in the first uh, week of the uh, in the first week of the season. Celtics play tonight. The Mavs play. The Mavs also play tonight, too. Okay. But then again, so do we. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? I mean, you've already played your yeah your fifth game in under a week's time. And then Thursday, neither one of them play on Thursday again. <laughs> Light schedule to start off for them, right? But those yeah. are the only ones that haven't taken a loss in the, the whole league. And dude, the Celtics? So the Celtics play their fourth game tonight, and then they don't play again until Saturday. How? I don't know, but it's weird as hell. They do not play again until Saturday. Which we play means, every day. Which means these games are going to start bunching up yeah, on them. They'll start having a, like the five and seven yeah, type they of pro- but, Or probably what will happen, I bet they're on national TV a ton. And don't. once the calendar hits January and all those ABC games really start kicking in, I bet you'll see the Celtics on TV a lot. I mean, you got to think, man. Day. You got a new team and you're shorthanded. And this is – we played the home opener a week ago today. Yeah. And they're playing their fifth game tonight. Yeah, no practice time. That's the one thing at least fifth after. Fifth game in seven days at to least, start? At least after the Portland games. Because um, the Portland's, what, Friday, Saturday? So after Saturday, you don't play again until Wednesday. So you've got days to practice in there. Playing five games in seven days. Which is probably what they're thinking with Santi. Let's just keep him out. Yeah. Let's keep him out. And then we get that little break. And even if his ankle's okay, it's okay to play. But if we just give them those extra days, it'll be even more okay to play. Never mind if we just take a loss to Portland. No. I hope they ain't got to ramp up Biombo. They could throw him out there against eight. And you know he kicked his ass in practice every day in Phoenix. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got one guy that cares, the other guy doesn't care. Yes. You know, you know DeAndre Ayton's going to look up and be like, oh, this freaking guy. You know, times, gonna, yeah. you know how many times he elbowed me in practice? He's that guy. He's like the sharp elbow guy that nobody wants to like yes. have to practice and play against. <laughs> I remember speaking of short elbow guy when I very when I first started covering the Grizzlies before they even had their first inaugural season. I had gotten this. Uh, I worked at the radio station, and uh, my program director, who was the the, the, the worst attitude guy in the world ever. I mean, just every day he was like, I got this thing from the Grizzlies and they're going to be like, uh, they're doing like draft workouts at Rhodes college. Who gives a shit, you know, whatever. And I'm like, oh, wait, what? I'll go. And he was like, if you want to go, you go, I don't care, whatever. And I was like, I'll go. I was like, I'll just take my tape recorder over there. I was like, I'll see if I can get some audio. We could at least like, you know, Use it on updates or something. Right. He's like, whatever, do whatever you want. I was like, okay. So I go over there to Rhodes. I walk in. It's like uh, uh, Billy Knight and uh, Dick Versace and Michael Heisley and Chuck Daly is there mm-hmm. and like all these guys. And so next thing I know, they're practicing at the gym at Rhodes. That's where they're bringing in like draft workout guys. So I go over there and I see all these guys. I see Jason Richardson versus Trenton Hassel. And then I see Battier. I see all these guys, right? And uh, anyway, one of the days I went over there and I would never know who was working out before I got over there. And so I go over there and uh, and I'm the only media member there. I'm just like sitting in the corner of the gym and they let me watching it. And when I said that thing about the sharp elbow guy, it reminds me, I went to one and it was... Uh, Kirk Haston, who is now a – he is a government representative in Tennessee. Yeah. Um, but was like, uh, you know, coming out of Indiana, I think he was Big Ten Player of the Year. Uh, he was a Tennessee guy. And I knew Kirk in college because he went out with a girl. His, his high school girlfriend went to my college, and so he would come to visit her every once in a while. And then uh, he, was, he was working out against Ruben Boomjay Boomjay yeah. from Georgetown – and much like I was just talking about Biombo, Ruben Boomjay Boomjay was like the guy who was seven foot tall. And oh, he yeah, 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 the yeah, yeah. And he was like 
put his arms out like this and swing them around and like you know it's like the the other guys are just like what the hell yeah. and then they made him do this like it's the only time this ever happened to me in a workout but again i knew the guy that was working out and so i do this thing where it's like you got to post up like at the for at the basically like the elbow get the ball now i got to go in and i got to score and so this dude gets the ball and he's like you know dribbling it like up to his like nipples you know, like he's a mess, right? So he like dribbled, he's trying to like back down and like Kirk Hayson's like not even moving, he's just like standing there. All of a sudden he just throws this wild ass hook shot up <laughs> like that and it goes in and Kirk Hayson looks over me and he's like, Are you kidding me? And I was like, uh, bro, you better just finish the workout. Ruben like, Boom J Boom J. I was like, you have run up against a bus all today. I was like, A, you're gonna get injured. B, this guy is hitting some wild hook shots. Wild. This is like bro- pointy, no, bro- nothing's McKean. worse than playing against pointy elbow guy. Pointy uh, look. That's what Biombo is. You're not factoring that in in the next twenty one games. We got pointy elbows now. Maybe not. All right. We're gonna take a break. Jessica Betts is gonna join us in studio. Chris Martin is show. Michael Wallace, you saw uh, Zaire play. Do you see that progression coming out of out of the, the young man from Stanford? I do see the progression. I do see the growth. He came into training camp saying no one around here worked harder than me. And that was a declarative statement. Hey, Grizzlies fans, be sure to tune in to Grisby, where the panel and I break down all things Grizzlies and take a look at the rest of the NBA as well. The show is live every Wednesday, 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. You know when a melty Sonic grilled cheese sounds so good, but so does a juicy burger topped with savory bacon and creamy peppercorn ranch. But then again, so does perfectly crispy tots or fries. And you couldn't possibly choose because brain no work too good when tummy empty. Yeah, us too. Sonic bacon peppercorn ranch grilled cheeseburger with tots or fries for just $3.99. Tax not included, add-ons cost extra. Limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. Zaire Williams. Yeah, man. Seven of ten from the field, four of six from three. He's had, can we agree, an encouraging preseason. Yep. We've said it all training camp. Like, the best version of this Grizzlies is probably going to be, when the season starts, is probably going to be with him as your starting wing being productive. That's right. That's how they're going to look the best. The Gary Parish Show, live weekdays at 10 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. We know there's only one team you want to watch, and Valley Sports is the place to get your Grizzlies. Experience the comebacks, the buzzer beaters, the can't-miss Memphis-made moments live. Valley Sports keeps the grind going before and after the game, too, with Pete, Brevin, Fish, and Chris on Grizzlies Live. Watch Grizzlies basketball all season long with Valley Sports and streaming on the Valley Sports app. Valley Sports, home of the only team you want to watch. You and I actually have something in common. So I used to be a performer inside the squared circle, and you did as well. Do you miss taking the bumps? Do I miss taking the bumps? No, not in the slightest. Absolutely not. It, it hurts, and it's dangerous. And um, no, that was the one thing that I don't miss about it. Check out Dustin Five Star and Eric E. Rock McMahon on Grind City Media Wrestling weekly on the Grind City Media app and on the Grind City Media YouTube channel. Welcome back to the Chris Vernon Show on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app presented by Caesar Sportsbook. Now, yeah. back to your host, Chris and Vernon. At the jungle, man, we at the mud. Play. Keep it moving, man, we on the run. Hey, been a struggle, but we ain't done. Yeah, been a struggle, but we overcome. Hey, at the jungle, man, we at the mud. Play. Keep it moving, man, we on the run. Keep on swinging, never know when we gon' land, right? Hit you with the left, up a cut, say goodnight on the canvas. You not know who the man is. Everybody got a plan until the punch landed, you know? I'm a rose through the concrete, I've been through it. Here to beat up on the odds, boy, y'all yeah, been proving. All the doubt is wrong, let me go and call it out. Feeling good to make a shot of gun, put the mind. All right, we're back. Chris Vernon, yeah. show Caesar Sportsbook. Go to the App Store. You can download Caesar Sportsbook today. It is free to download. It is legal to use in the state of Tennessee. And 
New users get up to $1,000 back as a bonus bet if you lose your first wager. Using the code GCM1000, GCM1000, Caesar Sportsbook. Uh, what's the line tonight? Uh, jazz two and a half. Two Disrespectful. Two, two, it's two to two and a half. Disrespectful. <laughs> Two to two and a half. Uh, Who uh, do they think we are? Who do we think we are? Yeah, Jessica Benson here in studio. Before I get to uh, everything we're doing, Jessica, I do have to mention this because I forgot to at the beginning. You may have noticed that Jessica is sitting in the seat that is typically uh, taken by Devin Walker. Devin, of course, on the trip uh, this time and is in Utah. And last night, as you may know, was Halloween. And many, many of the Grizzlies traveling party uh, dressed up and evidently Mr. Walker found his way to a karaoke bar in Utah in Salt Lake City oh. now what Devin Walker does not know is that my network has grown exponentially over the years and I have moles everywhere um, goons in every city as yes. they say and I have obtained video of Devin Walker last night doing karaoke in downtown Salt Lake City, dressed as I don't know what. Yeah. But evidently, he got up on stage, and interestingly enough, the Post Malone lives in Utah. <laughs> Could have very well been there. Could have been. Because it appears that, you know, look, it is hard to decipher because he's terrible, but I think it's congratulations by Post Malone, is it not? Uh, we have the video. This is last night in Salt Lake City. Oh, hassle time to the blue man. I got a text from Eric yesterday afternoon. He was like, hey, can you help me with some makeup? And I was taking a nap. And I woke up. I said, I'm sorry, I'm late. And he sent me the picture of him in Blue Man, Blue Group? Man Group full makeup. Oh, my commitment. gosh. Oh my so who, gosh. Did, wait, who did he get to help him then? I don't know. I, also, he was in Salt Lake City. So how were you going to help no, him? No, they with? left yesterday afternoon. Oh, okay. I was going it to. It was at like noon. Oh, was, wait, he was going to wear that on the plane? They all wore everything they all on, wore the everything on the they plane. They had a costume contest. Oh, okay. Rob Fisher had a feather jacket on. Ooh. Yeah. There's no pictures of this anywhere. I guess he didn't want to rile anybody up. It was like a feather jacket on, and then he, had, he wore jean shorts, like rolled up, and he had a stick that was his bear poker. He was Dylan Brooks. I promise you. Oh, my God. With wow. the bear poker. That's great. With the bear poker and the feather jacket and everything. And, and no and, photos. Yeah, I haven't seen any, but I know that's what he was. Yeah. Uh, and I will tell you that this morning, after I seen Hasseltine there, I was explaining to William, uh, because we posted that video of Tony Allen saying he was the eighth option, I explained to him that we have this clip of Eric yelling during a playoff game on the broadcast when Tony took a shot from the baseline that airballed, what was that? Yes. And I was joking with him. And hey, do you know what my son's response was? He goes, is he always mad? And I was like, yes, <laughs> he's always mad. I said, I sit right down. And you're on the radio broadcast. I said, I sit right down from him. And it will be like, I, I was like, William, let me give you an example. And, you know, I've, I've been friends with Eric for 20 years, so I can do this. But he'll be on the broadcast, and it'll be like, and I can't hear everything he's saying. But it will be like this. It'll be, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I try to get my, make my voice lower like his, right? It'll be like, and there's another Derek Jones three. He's now made four. I mean, you've got to get out there. Mavs 102, Grizz 86. We'll be back on the Grizzlies Radio Network. <laughs> and you'll hear like the yes. table rattle. Yes. Damn it. The <laughs> They do it! <laughs> Headphones slam He's down. He's wide like, open! <laughs> the table shakes a little bit. Yeah. My laptop takes a little tumble. <laughs> Blue <laughs> man! It. I was glad. That he looked so happy in that in that video. I'm glad to see him here yeah, happy. Or it'll be about one of the referees. But oh, this yeah. guy oh, has yeah. been making horrible calls <laughs> for 10 years.
years and he still is in the lead. And there's another Derek Jones three. <laughs> <laughs> got, just got to guard him. <laughs> the worst is when he goes quiet, quiet, though. Uh, then he's really oh, yeah. The oh, yeah. The it's quiet, quiet cause. is. <laughs> it's, 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 it's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just hard breathing. It's like, yeah. okay, all right. It's a lot of dead air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Mavs, Shout out, Eric Castle. Mavs time. now made 22-3. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just right. can't EP, leave them like, wide EP, open. And EP will just be like. Yeah, you know, we, it's just a little bit of bad luck tonight. You know, that you're not used to seeing this many shots fall, but. And, well, they're wide open every time. <laughs> <laughs> so, my parents listen to every single game, and so they're so well versed oh, amazing. in Eric Castletine as the play by play announcer. But it's awesome because. He gets them excited. Like they oh, feel I know. like they he are cares. part of the team. Oh yes. Eric cares. And the other thing games. I'm gonna give to Eric, because I've listened to a lot of radio guys over the year. Eric is the absolute best at describing the action. Yes. Yeah. Time, score, what is actually mm -hmm. happening. You it is the best compliment you could give a radio guy that you actually feel like you can envision what's happening. He in paints the a game. picture. Yes. He does. He paints yeah. the picture in a of the way game. to yes. where I'm constantly not wondering what's the score, how much time's left, where are these guys out on the court. Like he is very descriptive, very very good. That is so, a talent. I had to do that Saturday when I filled in for you because the TV in the studio and the radio studio is so far behind uh, the radio call in my ears. That I was just so off listening to Hasseltine and watching the oh, TV. Oh, yeah. I just quit watching the TV, and I just took put the headphones on. I didn't oh, yeah. miss anything. That's and we got I, our ass kicked, but. <laughs> that's what I used to do, too. It's so, a little easier when it's yeah. like, oh, God, the Wizards are up 19. I don't want to watch this anymore. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like, I'm just put it in my ear. That was super smart to make Roser do that game, by the way. Hindsight, really great. Felt horrible about it. But I was also watching. I, like, I just watched USC give up 49 points to Cal, too. So I don't think my stomach could have taken those back-to-back. -back, so and, and Gary Darby's like, Gary Darby's like, Grizzlies, Wizards, or Ole Miss Vandy? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to pick Ole Miss Vandy on this one, too. For sure. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, speaking of college football, you always get us ready for the upcoming Ooh. college football weekend by giving us five games that we need to pay attention to. What do we got this week? This is such a good week. Oh, it is? It, I, think this is week. I think this is a really good week. Oh. And I'm really upset because... Well, I'm glad the Grizzlies are out of town. To <laughs> like, I, oh. I can't. Oh, you're at yeah, a wedding. I'm at a wedding. Granted, the wedding is on Friday, and it's a USC wedding. Aren't you USC getting old Saturday. enough to where you don't have to go to these anymore? Like, yeah, everybody's she still loves getting married. traveling for weddings. It's the weirdest thing. I love travel. I mean, I love traveling, and it's often a I guess you're right at that age, right, where had, people are still. 12 bridesmaids. 12? I don't know. 12 people. You had 12? Yeah. I had 12 bridesmaids, so this is a... Dude, I had three this people. Is number... I had three people. Seven. I'm not kidding. I had three. I had my dad and my best two buddies from college. That was it. I had 12, and I had, like, four on the fringe. <laughs> you cut four? Yeah. Do you talk to them still? Yeah. I'm getting lunch with one of them on Saturday in New York. We all I will be missing college Are football. you in this wedding? She didn't do bridesmaids, but, like... Is there like a trade there that needs to be honored? Um, She's gonna poison your lunch. If I, I was I in, if you were in mine, you need to be in mine. So I got into a not a weird, just a unique situation, I guess. Where like my high school group, there were five of us, and we made like a pact in high school, like oh, we're all gonna be in each other's weddings. But then it worked out because we were all still friends. But granted, like we don't see, like none of us live in the same place. You anymore. have five high school friends? Yeah. Well, I'm one of the five, the four. Wow. I know, I know. It's a lot. I had no high school friends. <laughs> it's a lot. There's like one guy I keep up with every once in a while. But then you're stuck going to all these weddings. Not stuck. You're honored to be able to go to all <laughs> these weddings. And luckily my friends live in cool places and get married in cool places. So I've been, you know, to various. Like the hotel that she's getting married at in Brooklyn is awesome. I can't wait. It'll be one of the coolest weddings I ever go to probably. But I'm also traveling for a wedding, and I have no time to go to a single Broadway musical, and that just. <laughs> so you're gonna be. So you're gonna no be. No college football. Yeah, but yeah, yeah no you Broadway are. You're musicals. gonna have it pulled up on the phone. Oh, of course I will. Yeah, All yeah, right. Yeah. So do you say this is a good week? What do it's we got? A great week. Week ten. All right. We got our first college football playoff rankings that 
don't matter, but at least give us context for this coming week. I actually think the most interesting game of the weekend is LSU-Alabama, so we will start there. All right. 645 on CBS, Alabama, three-point favorites. Total is 60 and a half. There are, in my opinion, two outcomes for this game. One, Alabama reclaims its narrative as a legitimate CFP contender. Or Jaden Daniels is going to win the Heisman yep. on Saturday night. Like, this would be his Heisman moment. And Roser sent me an interesting stat that was going around that Jaden Daniels was trying to be the, the first the, quarterback. Okay. It got, I have the, yeah. No, but you have to ask him who it is. Do not give okay. it away who it is. The stat that was going around was that Jaden Daniels is trying to be the first starting quarterback to beat Nick Saban in straight seasons since who? Straight seasons. Consecutive seasons. So was this... <laughs> it's, 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 I'm going to say this was at LSU. You'd be wrong. It was at Bama? No. Oh, Michigan State? Oh, God. What, like Drew Henson or something? You're close! Like, you're cl- close! You, it's not Tom Brady. No, no. Well, you're close. Uh, <laughs> you got the first name right. Bledsoe? No. no. Drew Hentz? No. no. Drew. Other Drew. 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 Played in the Big Ten. <laughs> he is not an NFL quarterback anymore because <laughs> he's retired. He's going to be a Hall of Famer. <laughs> he won a Super Bowl. He was awesome in the Drew. NFL. Breeze? Yes! Breeze at Purdue. At Purdue. What? <laughs> yes. That stat is inaccurate, would, though. It's inaccurate? It's, it's fake inaccurate. It's fake news? Wow. Brett McMurphy sent fake news? Oh, wow. It's inaccurate. Brett Rex McMurphy. It's, it's a Brett McMurphy. Stuff. It's probably Brett McMurphy without the Y, and you got no, duped. no, no. It was oh, it was Brett McMurphy, and oh, he okay. since because I went back to look at it oh. today, and he since had deleted he it, and actually it. in his Rex Grossman did it. Rex Grossman did it <laughs> at, at Florida while Saban was at LSU, and technically this one's off on a technicality, which isn't fair. But Jordan Jefferson beat him in back-to-back years. However, he did not technically start in 2011. If you remember that game where Jarrett Lee threw that really bad pick and looked like he was going to cry, and then Jordan Jefferson came in, there's that one as well. But it's rare air. All it's right. rare territory yeah. for Jaden Daniels. Brian Kelly would become one of just eight coaches who beats Nick Saban in back-to-back years. Um, and when it co- like, this is all about Jaden Daniels. He has 25 touchdowns, three interceptions, over 2,500 passing yards. Uh, he, there's a lot of football left to be played, but if he goes out there and just lights it up in a huge win, against Alabama. Burrow had one of the, uh, I think, the greatest season in college football history. And, like, week by week, they've been lining up the stats. Yeah, and they are, like, right football. there. I mean, that this kid is having a freakish statistical season because he's got all the rushing yards, too. And I think that's the key for Alabama. Like, if they can take away his legs and force him into the air as much as possible, the only – the iffy thing is we saw when a team has multiple weapons, like what Texas did mm-hmm. to Alabama, they really spread the ball out. And LSU does have multiple weapons. I don't really – They're Jayden dicey, Daniels though. going to be awesome, whatever. I just think defensively for LSU, they are down so – like I don't want to go all yeah. official injury report on this. They're down their best defensive back. They're down their best defensive lineman. They're potentially down – they might be down all four transfer corners. And if you have four transfer corners, it means you didn't believe in a single corner that you had in your own room. And that just makes me nervous. Like they lost me. They lost me in the Arkansas game in terms of believing that they could be special because Arkansas should have beaten them. Yeah. And I was like, man. And they're not going to use Harold Perkins as a spy against Bro, Arkansas Miller. scored seven points against <laughs> Mississippi State. Did you watch any like of that game? 50 against LSU. Yeah, I know. Oh, that was awful. <laughs> That's crazy. But I also think that this is one of the things where Alabama runs the ball so much. I think they run the ball 60% of the time. Yeah. And so do they just control possession and yeah. control the clock. And then when LSU does get the ball, Jaden Daniels is out there trying to go hero mode and potentially things get a little... Well, it's at Bama, too, right? It's at Bama. So, I really like Alabama in this spot. Saturday night, too. Yeah. And Saturday night. And Alabama, I've been asked a couple times over the last few days, like, who do you think... Who are your four at this point? And I have Alabama in my four. Like, I, I do believe that this team is good enough and that the SEC, as it started off on a season of, oh, this is such a down year for the SEC. If you look at the college football playoff rankings, no matter if you care about them or not, uh, the SEC's all over it. Sure. So, oh, trust me. I, I got a text during it, and it was one of the uh, guys sent me this tweet. Uh, I'm on a, te- a group text with a bunch of Mississippi State guys, a bunch of Mississippi State guys. So they sent, uh, hey, I can't find who was the first ever 
uh, number one in the college football rankings. Could somebody uh, uh, find it for me? And because it was Mississippi State, so that should tell you everything you need to know, yeah. right? Yeah. How much we should care about this right now? Yeah, it changes <laughs> a, yeah. Lot. a lot. Speaking of, for the second one, okay, we'll keep it with the SEC, and we'll go with the best team in the SEC, Georgia, playing Missouri, Missouri. in the first college football playoff rankings. They gave Georgia. Number two, and I feel like Kirby Smart loves that oh, because you might as well. Who's number one? Sit. I didn't even Ohio see Ohio State. No, oh, 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 yeah, that's I right. yelled at my Ohio TV State. last night that's right. because that's the thing. College football playoff show, it's just a TV show. That's right. It's just a drum up. <laughs> and and, and, and it got Penn me State. so mad. I yelled multiple times. We'll get to the other one. <laughs> Ohio State. That's <laughs> Chris right. Chris was like, "What's wrong with you? Like, this is so <laughs> stupid." Um, but anyway, so George is in at number two. They're still number one in the AP rankings, and this stat blew my mind. Not one number one AP ranked team has lost at home since 2014, since the start of the college football playoff, since Mississippi State. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's, the last just, number that's the one? last number one team at home to go down. Wow. Yeah. And Missouri is 0-17 all time <laughs> in program history <laughs> against number one ranked teams. This game was so close last year because I feel like Missouri kind of snuck up yeah. on Georgia. There's no sneakiness. It doesn't take away from Missouri having a really good season. And like I've talked extensively about how much I love Luther Burden. Um, I think their quarterback in Brady Cook is really, really good, especially when he has time to throw. Georgia's pass rush hasn't been awesome, um, but they have good safeties. They have good corners. I said last week, like, comparison is the thief of joy. This Georgia team might not be 2021 Georgia or 2022 Georgia. They're really good. Like, I got burned. I thought Florida would keep it much Dude, closer last trashed. week. And they just destroyed them. They trashed Florida. Yeah. So, I don't know. I think, is a, I think they're going to beat the piss out of Missouri. <laughs> do. How, how yes. much do you think? Because So, it's at 15 well, and a half. I, by more than that? 30. I know. I don't think Missouri has the players to hang with them, and I think they know it was They're close get last year. In the trenches. Well, I think it's they know it was close last year in Columbia. Memphis was right there without a kicker, exactly like an onside kick Missouri, chance against Missouri. Missouri and has it, not faced a good second team. It, Memphis it, included it in that like list. Ten touchdowns to Georgia. <laughs> Memphis played Georgia. Georgia. Oh my God! I would not, I would not Death watch. By 40. No, but well, here's the thing: I like, couldn't. So I would not that Florida play. game last week when like they called a timeout early in the game and they come back out. Napier does, and they're going to go for it on the fourth and inches. They got the first. They should have gotten the first down anyway on the third down. Of the refs gave a bad spot, but anyway, they come out and go for it, and they try to run the little, the little trick play where, like, the running back's going to throw it. And if you watch it, there, there are two receivers who roll out. Bro, they are both double covered. But it doesn't matter because Georgia just explodes in the backfield, just grabs the running back and throws him down. Dude, I'm like, dude, they are. You would have loved. So you remember Saturday's the day I broke my phone. Yeah. So I was having to head to uh, Verizon to go get my phone. And so I've got satellite radio in the car, and I was flipping around through the games. And – that game was on Georgia, Florida on one of the channels and I had it on and they were going to halftime and it was the Florida uh, radio call. Oh, and so they, they, oh, they're going to go down to the field to talk to Billy Napier. Dude, you more than anyone would have loved this because you ever listen to him talk. I mean, oh, he's hey, country. Southern. Yeah, guy. Southern. And he's like, he's like, coach, what are you going to do to get it right? You know, get your guys back in the second half. He's like, this dude said gap assignment <laughs> five times. <laughs> he, oh, no, no, no. Oh, gap no. integrity. Gap integrity. We got, uh, look, we, don't, we have not had gap integrity. We got to have gap integrity. Oh, my integ God. Gap integrity. And I was like, oh, <laughs> that's your problem. Gap integrity. Really? And so, no. yeah, he was talking about gap integrity. And then, so then that went to halftime. So I flipped it. And I never heard anything sadder than the end of of the South Carolina, Texas A&M call, and it was the South Carolina feed, and they, like, the announcers were getting irritated with each other, and he's like, this would be a great time for a block right now, and uh, this is a color guy on the South Carolina call. He's like, we, we, hadn't, we hadn't blocked one. All. He's like, this would be a great time. We hadn't blocked one all year, and the play-by-play -play guy guys, play-by-play -play guy's like, yes, we have. We have blocked one. <laughs> all right, all right, so then, hey, so then the game, like the game's like winding down, and he's like, you know, he's like, obviously a tough one to take. You know, they needed to get this one at A and M. You know, all the goals they set out before the season, those are all kind of 
not achievable now. <laughs> all the all the yeah, all the goals the fans set before it's you know not achievable now. I mean, you're just gonna have to get in the portal and try to get this thing right. <laughs> I was like, oh my, this is so sad. I forgot my phone was broken. I was feeling so sad for South Carolina fans. Like, oh, oh man, South Carolina this is so depressing. Oh. I thought last week was kind of a lame. <laughs> it was week. lame. Outside of the Oklahoma Kansas game, ended up being awesome, awesome. and hit the over. Yeah, barely. <laughs> yes. Um, but outside of that, it was just like. Right. I hope you I hope you watched Clemson lose on the CW network though because I just want to say anyone who was up on the Clemson train then got to ride Dabo into the whole call oh with Tyler from Spartanburg this Amazing. week my favorite drama in college football All right anyway. so we got uh, these are great All right so we got LSU great Bama games. when is Georgia Missouri is that 2:30 2:30 uh, 2:30 yep. right. well, we're we'll back, back on yeah. CBS <sighs> What else we got uh, Oh no At 6:30 on ABC we will watch the USC Trojans host the Washington Huskies in a game that the Huskies are three and a half point road favorites with a total of 76. 76. You might say USC's defense isn't that bad. Oh. They are. So is U Dubs. I am here <laughs> to demand uh, equal. We're over on punking. this, aren't we? We're over. Yes. Washington is scoring 50. So now we're just asking ourselves, can USC score 26? Here's the thing. I think this is a part of the, the usual, all of you new Pac-12 perusers in this final year of the Pac-12. This is where the conference starts eating itself alive <laughs> constantly. And I saw it when they were doing the college football playoff rankings yesterday. And it's Washington 5 and Oregon 6. And they're right next to each other. And for the last couple of weeks, I've said, Oregon is the best team in the Pac-12. I think Oregon is the best team in the country. Mm. And yesterday... The second time I found myself screaming at the college football playoff ranking show was Kirk Herbstreit was asked who the best team he thought was. And in a roundabout way, he was like, well, if I saw Oregon on my schedule, I think I'd be most scared to play them. Say it. <laughs> say it with your chest. <laughs> Oregon is the best team in the country. It's impossible to say because they lost to Washington. So you have the head to head right. right now. But Oregon's playing so well. Washington, since beating Oregon Whoa. in a great game, has barely hung on to their 8-0 and record that they have at this point. They almost that lost Stanford to Arizona State. That Stanford game was State. gross. The Stanford yeah. game was gross, but the Arizona State game was the grossest. They mm. didn't even get an offensive touchdown. <laughs> and so while USC's defense is abysmal, it ranks 111th, thanks, Alex Grinch, UW's is 95th. Mm. And I do think that USC's at home. They're in a position where it feels as if the season is lost because it is. It feels like Caleb Williams has lost the Heisman because he – has he, 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 he has. he's not winning the Heisman. That Notre Dame that game lost them, it for him. That leaves yeah. them in the perfect position to come ah. and hand the Pac 12's last undefeated member its first loss of the season. And the one thing that Alex Grinch's defense has done did well last season, hasn't done as well this year, is at least creating takeovers mm -hmm. or takeaways just for the sense of like get Caleb Williams the ball back in his hand. Yeah, defense, that happened great. Anything. Like they're, yeah. they're, they're high on Either that. let him score quick That's right. or get a turnover. Mm -hmm. And just have Caleb Williams have the ball in his hands as much as possible. And I think this is a really good opportunity for Caleb to show how he handles adversity. It's a home game, primetime on ABC. All right, you watch these teams issue. every week. What is the lowest possible total you think it takes to win this game? I'm saying the, the winner scores blank. 38? Really? I mean, I, I would put it in the 40s. I yeah, thought that would be the halftime score. Yeah. <laughs> 38 by halftime. I really think that I really think this is going the over. I, I, really I feel think like so. this feels like one of those games that we're texting each other in the second quarter, and the updated live total yes. is 102. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? Yes. Like, Jess, I think y'all are going to be okay this weekend. I think y'all can win this game. I do too. Washington's and, and defense. Why have they been bad? Washington's defense is not good. No, Washington's like, defense. Like, it's not good. good. Like, what happened USC to them? can USC? score. No. Uh, Washington. Oh, yeah. Their defense just isn't good. It's not good. Jeez. I, I mean, Penix is still yeah. pretty. They good. heard someone talking. That, 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 I can't remember no, who and it Oregon was. trashing. She's no bonus. Hey, hey, look. Oregon trashing Utah at Utah was crazy. Yeah, yeah, that someone that was said they're like, what? And that's why. I was like, oh, Oregon's yeah. that's good. And like, that, like, you can look at it as, oh, maybe Utah had a softer schedule. And did, whatever. It's in Utah. <laughs> we talked about it. It's impossible to win in Utah. They've that's Norvell's boy, home. too. Yeah. And, uh, what if, what if they face off? Ooh. That's a real possibility. Oregon, Florida sad. State. Yeah, that you could get that in the, as one of the playoff games. That'd For awesome. sure. For sure. Awesome. All right. I think Oregon's good, too. All right. Four. All right. The final bedlam. 
oh, Oklahoma. Wow, yeah. Oklahoma State. One of my favorite rivalries. One of just four in-state rivalries that started before the state became a state. <laughs> they played three times before 1907, which is when Oklahoma was statified. I don't know if that's a word. Wait, so, what, so was it? it? What was yeah. it? So what were the schools called? I don't know. Don't ask me further questions. That what was, was what the state? What, what do you mean? It was just land? Like it didn't, yeah, it wasn't. Did, it and hadn't did, established statehood. Did one of you the places, did they call themselves Oklahoma yes, State in Oklahoma? Them, yeah. But the state wasn't a state. Yeah. So what did they decide to name the state Oklahoma because those teams Hold had already on. called themselves that? No, and the those other schools ones, were named those names before yes. the state was named? Yes. Oklahoma? Yeah. Oklahoma, the University of Oklahoma was founded in 1890. Oklahoma State University was founded in and 1890. And Oklahoma did not become a state until 1907? Oklahoma State was founded under the Moral Act. Now I we're getting into so some confused. deep history. But yes, Oklahoma wasn't a state until 1907. And one of four, Arizona, Arizona State, another one that was a rivalry before Arizona became a state, Utah, Utah State, and New Mexico, New Mexico State. The more you know. What about Ole Miss and Mississippi State? Yeah, I don't know. They're too old. We don't know about that I one. I should have paid attention more in school. Yeah. Oh, no. you guys I mean, didn't I'm know from that it, right? side of the country. And, and you I did good in that. school, and you didn't know that, right? Not good. Too, All right, makes too it far feel, over. It makes um, you feel I, better. I am not convinced that Oklahoma is a great team. I think they're a good team. I think, like, the winner of the Big 12 is What are you talking about? They, their defense is horrible. Yeah, yes. it is. Horrible. Dude, they should have lost to Central Florida, and they should have They should have lost to Texas. Texas vomited all right. over Texas, themselves. yeah, that That's was one why of those where it's – They should have three yeah. losses, bro. And the other yeah. thing I don't like about Oklahoma yes. is they celebrate Lincoln Riley losses more than they do they their own do. wins. It's, they do. They the hate only Lincoln thing, they, 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 the they only got like, thing about USC giving up 49 points yeah, to Cal was that Oklahoma lost That's right. to Kansas. But it's Norman, Oklahoma. And I don't mean this in a bad way, but they have forced me into it. Like, what else are they doing? You're just Except super for sitting at home and getting ready to with dunk on Lincoln. Yes, they are. Constantly. You know I mean? They're also really bad at stopping the run. Yeah. And Oklahoma State has one of the best running backs in the country. Ollie Gordon the second. He is the next <laughs> Barry Sanders. In Ollie two games. Gordon the Ollie second. Gordon the second. In two games, he has 54 carries for 553 <laughs> yards. For reference, West Virginia as a team, 83 carries, 512 yards. Kansas State as a team, 98 carries, 522 yards. Ollie Gordon, 553 yards Amazing on 54 name. carries. You know how much Jim I love Chubba Hubbard? They have some unbelievable names. They sure names. do. They sure do. And they Ollie finally Gordon stopped. the second. They were doing the weird thing where they were playing multiple quarterbacks. They were doing a little yeah. quarterback carousel. They've stopped that. Uh, defensively, they're not great either. Their secondary is not good, so maybe Dylan Gabriel goes back out and remembers that Oklahoma's one good thing they can do is create explosive plays on offense. That, could, that, kid, that, kid, that Sanders kid should have just stayed there. Yes. One that's at Ole Miss? Yes. Yeah. He doesn't get to play? Yeah, I know. Well, Spencer you, you, Sanders. You, went there, you, you enjoying backing up Jackson Dart? Wouldn't you rather be starting for Oklahoma State? That's so weird. Well, that it, he, is weird. Yeah, it is weird. I just he thought he was going to start. I'm it. sure Lane told him he's going to start. Today is the 20th anniversary of Les Miles pregame saying, let her rip. And then they got <laughs> beat 52 to 9. So, <laughs> memories. <laughs> We'll always have that one. All right. So we got we LSU, Bama, Georgia, Missouri. We got USC, Washington. Oh. We got Bedlam. You're oh. right. All right. What's five? <laughs> what? It ain't Memphis, North Texas. No. no. South Florida. Put oh, some respect oh, my on the bad. Tigers. That was opponent. last week. Sorry. We made it through that hellhole. All right. I'm about to Number see it come up on the screen. Is Iowa Northwestern oh, go to at hell. Wrigley I, no, Field. No, nobody's watching. Yes, that. they are. If no. you like history, did you know the cheapest ticket for this game is $90? What? And, uh, yes. $90 to get in to watch Iowa Northwestern. You all are disgusting if you're paying $90 to go watch these two no teams way. at Wrigley. But here's why it's interesting. Over under 30. There's nothing interesting it about this. at 29 and a half, <laughs> which was the lowest total in history. Yep. It is now at 31. 30 and a half is the lowest record right now. So if it drops below 30 and a half, you are chasing great history in this wonderful sport of college football. How can you not be intrigued in a game that I just told you had a total of 76 in the same sport, the same beautiful sport of college football, there is a total out there sitting at 31. Well, I love it. You right? say chasing history, but it was two weeks ago with Iowa, Minnesota. <laughs> chasing history <laughs> at Wrigley Field, a game that deserves, frankly, so much better. 
Brian Ferentz, the big news this week out of Iowa is that they are expected to part ways with him. Mm. Uh, the nepotism <laughs> era at Iowa. Because they done. didn't average over 25 points Correct. a game. But did you know that not a single team in the Big Ten West right now is averaging over 25 points a game? All four new members of UCLA, USC, Oregon, and Washington are averaging over 30. If you remove UCLA from that, they're averaging over 40. And they are joining a conference where an entire division is failing to average 25 points at this moment. Northwestern's offense is 13th in the Big Ten, averaging 307 yards per game, which is 75 more than Iowa, (laughs) who is last in the Big Ten, averaging 234. You have to like all sides of the game, and this is a complete different version of the one that I usually love. It's at Wrigley, though. I'm curious. It's on Peacock. I won't watch it. How about the lower? How about the lowest total being broken within two weeks? Be great. Amazing. It's, it's very reminiscent of who was it? It was uh, when Melvin Gordon wasn't it him that had that? He like broke the all-time record for rushing yards in a game, and then like. Two weeks later, Samaji P. Ryan like, yeah. broke his record. It was like some kind of crazy. Yeah. It was like yeah. it was the most annoying thing ever. Like the guy broke the record for the most rushing yards in a college game, and yeah. then somebody broke it within um, like it was history. It, 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 it? But the guy like did not even get to hold on to the record. Yeah, it was P. Ryan. It was so he beat Ladanian Tomlinson's record. No, 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 Melvin Gordon, yeah, right? Melvin Gordon oh. beat Ladanian Tomlinson's record for how many yards? And it had been. 15 years, and then he had 408, and then two weeks, one week later, excuse me, <laughs> Samaji Piran had 427. That is so annoying. Insane. I had those names right. There's one thing I can't, response, I can't I can't remember when Oklahoma became a state, but I can remember Samaji <laughs> Piran breaking Melvin Gordon's record. Stealing that record right back. <laughs> Melvin Gordon's response. It sucks. Wow. Jess, I'm... 14 interview. Hey, P.S., that game, or the Iowa Minnesota game, hit the under by a wide margin. Yeah. Yeah, it did. I would take the over. Jess, I. Roser texted me. He's like, You're not going to tell us to take the over. I said, Please. No. I the the other one, I noticed what game you didn't have on your Which five one? this week. We got Army Air Force this week. Huh? We got the uh, military I'm academies done with them. again. What's the number? Uh, 31 and a half. You oh. won't get me. Mm-mm. Nope. Yeah. No, thank you. 31 and a half. Air I'd, Force did sneak into the first college I'd, football playoff. I'd take the under. <laughs> All right. She's going to knock, uh, stay around for NFL notes. Yeah, you want to yeah, knock yeah. them out? Yeah. yeah, we can do them real quick. Let's do it. Let's do some NFL. Let's see if you can get this. What up? What up? What up? What up? You getting Chase Young? Congratulations! We did not. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was good. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those. What's gonna happen? Are we not gonna be able to get to the quarterback still? So, I did hear. I did hear uh, Mike Lombardi, and this was wise. He said, "Well, now is he not under contract?" Yeah. So he's on the fifth-year team option. We're only paying him five hundred thousand. Okay, but you gave up a. Like a good second round pick. No. No? No. We gave up a compensatory third round pick that we got because okay. the 49ers, for the, the NFL offers incentives to teams. Oh, Rand Carthon or whatever. And D'Amico Ryan's. The NFL offers incentives if you hire yeah. black people and they get hired away by other teams. So gotcha. We got a compensatory third round pick, which we have two of them actually. So we used one of those to trade for Chase Young. So if Chase Young leaves in free agency, you get another one. We get another third round compensatory pick. Oh, so it's basically you're getting it for free. Wow, you're getting it for nothing. Yeah, but I did think it, this was actually a wise thing to say. He said, "Look, just think about this. You play football in the backyard. If you play five Mississippi, you can get the ball downfield. If you play three Mississippi, you can't get the ball downfield. They got corner problems, but if you play three Mississippi, you can't get the ball downfield. We'll see if they can get to the quarterback." Because they haven't so far. Although I did see the thing. It has to be the most over. I, I'm convinced that quarterback pressures and quarterback hits have to be the most overrated things in the world. Because Nick Bose is like fifth in quarterback pressures. And number one in the league in quarterback hits by a wide margin. But he has two and a half sacks. Mm. Yeah. Anyways, I hope it does help All out. Right. 
I hope it does help out, but we'll see. I, th- to be fair, I was not excited about Christian McCaffrey last year, and you told me you should be way more excited about Christian McCaffrey, and you have told me you should be way more excited about Chase Young. You excited about Christian McCaffrey? No, he's no. an idiot. Because he's hurt all the time. Um, Amon Ross St. Brown had his 11th career game with 100 receiving yards. That passes who for the most through three seasons in Lions history. And it is not Megatron. I was going to say Calvin Johnson. Oh, then it's Herman Moore. No, it's not Herman Moore. (laughs) Then it's uh, Brett Perryman. (laughs) 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 It's uh, no. It's also not Johnny Morton. It's Calvin Johnson. No, it's not oh, Calvin you're Johnson. Not Megatron. It's not Megatron. I have no idea. You'd have 11 in how long? Recent? In th- through three seasons. Oh, it, this is the most. This is the most. Yeah, this guy had. Monra's 11 are the most. This guy had 10. When did it happen? Great, great can point. You, can you I mean, in 2000s. Early to, 2000s? To, in the last 20 years. Let me see when he played. A Lions receiver? I think the Cowboys had him for a little bit, too. The Cowboys had him for a little bit? I believe bit? so. Where would he go to college? Uh, wait. Um, well, it, not, it, it could not be Golden Tate. There's no huh? Golden Tate. No, it's not Golden no. Tate. Oh, that's actually a good one. Where did he yeah, go this to- guy did play. The, if I give you the college, it'll give it away. Why? He played at Texas. Oh. Uh, Roy Williams. Roy Williams. We did. We had both Roy Williams. We had Oklahoma and Texas. Yeah, Roy you had Williams. the, the, the safety and the, yeah. Wow. You had both of them. I, I, I can still see Roy Williams letting uh, Deshaun Jackson run right past him. <laughs> <laughs> Many times. The quarterback. Since the beginning of 2022, there was one quarterback who has more go-ahead passing touchdowns in the final minute of regulation or OT than any other than any other quarterback in the league. Who is it? What? Final this min- year? Since this year? 2022. Oh. Geno There's, Smith. It is Geno Smith. Oh, wow. He, what happened. he just he, had one. He just had they one. Had he did no, it on yeah, Sunday. He was no his third. reason to win that game. That was good. Oh, bless. Um, Who'd they get yesterday? They got somebody. They got Leonard Williams. Yeah. Leonard Williams. Big yeah, cat. they got Leonard Final Williams. Brother. That's right. Uh, the Cowboys are the first team with a defensive touchdown, block punt, and defensive safety in a game since the 2017 Dolphins did it against the Broncos. The last team to do it in the first half like the Cowboys did was the 2007 Lions against the Chiefs. Jeez. Lamar Jackson is now 17-1 and against NFC teams in his career. Wow. His only loss is week six of 2022 to his old defensive coordinator, Wink Martindale, and the New York football giants. Wow. 16, 17, Dang. and 1? Yeah. That's yep. incredible. Uh, Matthew Stafford threw his 30th career pick six. That's tied for second most all time in NFL history. Who were the other two? The Ooh. guy tied with them and the guy who's thrown more pick sixes? Eli. No. Are these guys? Yes, like, they're they're Hall of Famers. Oh, they're Hall Favre, of Famers. Favre has Favre. the most, thirty-two of them all time. Manning? No. Uh, um, oh, uh, is it Marino? Marino. Uh, Marino I threw the ball a thousand yeah. times. These guys, you have to start for a long time to throw that many. That's right. You know, you got to start. Stafford's to throw that many. third. Stafford's third. Well, he's tied for second with him and Marino both at thirty. Oh, wow. Yeah. Do you know who who's the top five? Do uh, you know? do not have the top he said five. Favre's one. Favre's one. Huh. Yeah. I would imagine. I wonder where Breeze is. Don't feel like he threw a lot of picks, though. Maybe he did. Um, Deron Bland is the first player in Cowboys history with three pick sixes in a single season. Here you go. Uh, you ready? Uh, the, the next five are Namath, Manning, Breeze. They have 27, 28, 27, and 27. How many does Brady have? Because oh. that's crazy if Brady played for like 22 seasons and did not, I mean, playing for that long. Yeah, and not have that many. <laughs> Smart QB. <laughs> I'm, I'm scrolling down. Um, how about this? You want, you want an amazing note? So, uh, Brett Favre was... Okay, hold on. Sam Darnold... Threw, it was the first player to throw a pick six on his first career pass since Jameis Winston in 2015 
Before that, Brett Favre in 1991. Oh, wow. Their first career passes were pick sixes. <laughs> Darnold, Jameis, and Favre. I will say it wasn't That's a, crazy. It Two wasn't a pick six. Like it wasn't a pick six, but wasn't Tyson Badgent's a strip yeah. fumble for a touchdown? Yeah. Like it was a scoop and score for a touchdown? Okay, here we go. I got, I got your list here. All right, Favre, Stafford, Marino, Namath, and then Breeze and Manning are tied. Okay. Then Phillip Rivers. Yeah. Carson Palmer and Vinny Testaverde. Eli Manning and Norm Sneed. That's the top 10. Not Norm Sneed. Yeah. Uh, Brady is 17th. He threw 18 in 22 seasons. That's pretty impressive, man. <laughs> like, yeah. to only have 18 of them when you played, when you played that long. All right. Two more. Okay. And I love these. Okay. Love? I love these so much. I'm skipping over all the other notes I have to give you these notes. Wow. Where, are the, yeah, where are the bad weird. ones about the 49ers? Uh, I've got a Jamar. Well, I mean, the only thing about the 49ers, uh, there's the Jamar Chase note. Jamar Chase had his fifth I career mean, game. I mean, Brock Purdy, you know, like there's got to be something about him turning into a pumpkin. There's, there's, there's no, be there's, some, yeah, there's stuff about I'll, his QB rating. I'll make rating. sure I bring the notes. Yeah, then. that's fine. You can bring those next time. That's fine. Um, Jam- hey, what about the Cowboys being awesome? I They're- just read you a freaking Deron Bland note. And I had a stat about your defense. your defense. Yeah. Yes. Gave you Cowboys notes. I was looking something up. I didn't get to hear him. You can repeat it. Deron Bland is the first player in Cowboys history with three pick sixes in a single season. He is one more interception return away, or one more pick six away from tying the single season record of four. And that's which is an shared, NFL record? Which is shared by three players. You will not get oh. them. Uh, that's an NFL record? Yes. Oh, if he gets one more. Oh, jeez. You will not get these. Or are they guys are that they are old? Like famous? 93, 72, and 71. Are they oh, famous no. guys? One of them's a Hall of Famer. The others are not. You will not get them. Charles Woodson. No. What? Dan Sharper. No. The hardest hit is safety in the league. The Hall of Famer's from 1971. Ooh. 1971? Yeah, like I said, you're not going to get these. Um, it's Hall of Fame safety Ken Houston in 1971, Chief Safety Jim Kearney in 1972, and Eric Allen, the Eagles corner, in 1993. You're right. I would not have gotten those. Yeah, I know. <laughs> not one. I'm right. All right, last two. Will yeah. Levis! Nah. His girlfriend come back? Not yet. He said, nah. He said, nah. He's a new he man. did the Heisman on that hoe. Oh. Wow. <laughs> don't want it anymore. Uh, Will Levis is the fourth player in NFL history to throw four touchdown passes in his very first NFL game. He's the third to do it. He's the third, not the fourth. Who? He's the third. To throw four touchdown passes in his very first NFL game. I know game. one of them. Who's one of them? Marcus Mariota. Marcus Mariota is him. one of yeah. them. The other I one's know, a Hall wow. of Famer. That shit makes you really confident. He's a Hall of <laughs> Famer. <laughs> Dan Marino's a Hall of Famer. I don't know who the other one is. It's not Dan Marino. Jim Kelly's a Hall of Famer. Rick Ross said he's beaten dudes by margins bigger than... Rick Ross had a lyric about this. This player said, I'm beating dudes by margins bigger than... Uh... Does it rhyme with margins? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean, he made it rhyme. It kind of does. You're throwing me off. Who? Dun, 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 dun. What? Ton. What? Chad Pennington? No. 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 He's a Hall of Famer. He's a Hall of Famer. Takerton. No. Oh, Tarkenton. 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 Beating dudes by margins bigger than Fran Tarkenton. Rick Ross said. Damn, Damn right he did. Tenant? Damn right he did. Get up on that self-made volume one. That Maybach Damn. Music Group self-made volume one. Album is a classic. Yeah. Tons of random random sports references. I love this Maybach music. Wale says he's he is on his Tom Brady and y'all dudes is Eric Crouch. I love this Maybach music. Uh, Maybach music. All right. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Joins Marvin Harrison and Joey Galloway as the only receivers Joey to Galloway. catch to catch four different quarterbacks' first career oh. touchdown passes. 
Oh wow. Oh, wow. So no Jason Witten. I will see no no no, no, no. For 70 years. It's Marvin Harrison, right. Joey Galloway, and DeAndre Hopkins. Oh, the only ones oh, they have oh. caught touchdown passes. They have caught the first career touchdown passes from four, four different quarterbacks. So I'm not gonna ask you to name the for the Colts and for the Seahawks. But do you know your Texans quarterbacks? Oh. So you got Will Levis, Titans, DeAndre Hopkins. Oh, God. Three Texans quarterbacks DeAndre Hopkins caught their first career touchdown passes from. Uh, I love this right. note. It's no. a great it's, note. One of them is. It's not Stroud. It's Davis Mills. No. Is one of what? Them, one of them's Osweiler. No, it's not. What? He started in Denver. Oh, yeah. I thought he played in. Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson is one Watson. of them. Um, I should have saved that for the ending. <laughs> <laughs> Jess, you just choosing to ignore that uh, one right there? What did you say? He said to Sean Watson, he said, I should have saved it for the ending. <laughs> um, How well do you know your white Texans quarterback? Yeah, about, what, um, no, um, what was the guy's name that started in the playoff game after they got hurt? Oh, God. Um, um, Think about Meg the Stallion. What is she? Oh, oh Tom, Kate, Savage. Tom, Tom Savage. Savage. Tom Savage. Oh, yes. Tom, Tom Savage. I was about to say Case Keenum. Case Keenum. Yes. <laughs> He's Let's from go. Houston. It is Case Keenum. It is. <laughs> Will Levis, Deshaun Watson, Tom Savage, <laughs> and Case Keenum. Marvin Harrison's four quarterbacks that yeah, he caught their first wow. And I thought Case Keenum because Mega South from Houston. She brought them both. Jesus, it worked. Jesus Savage. It worked for both of them. What an uh, assist. Marvin me. Harrison's four quarterbacks, you guys. I mean, you would have gotten Peyton Manning, but the other three. Jim Sorge. Oh, wow. Kelly Holcomb. Wow. Oh. And Kerwin Bell. Oh, that is impossible. <laughs> That's impossible. Joey Galloway's four quarterbacks. He caught their first career touchdown passes from Gino Toretta, John Kitna. Chad Hutchinson and Bruce Gradkowski. Kerwin Bell. Kerwin Bell is the head coach at Western Carolina. Really? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> he is. Love it. I love it. The Western the Catamounts. Carolina Catamounts. I love the Catamounts. All right. Oh, 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 give me the other names real quick. J oh, Jim Sorge. Right? Yeah, Jim Sorge. Yeah. Okay. S O R G I. Yeah, I know. I know Jim yeah, Sorge. Yeah. Jim Sorge, uh, let's see. He's not good. Oh, he's only 42 years old. He's the co-owner of Pro Team Tactical Performance. Pro Team Practical Performance. And then who was the other one? Where are they now? Who was the other who was one? Kerwin Bell, Jim Sorge, uh, and who? Kelly Holcomb. Kelly Holcomb. Wow. Kelly Holcomb, 50 years old now. He played at Middle Tennessee. He was last on the coaching staff at Riverdale High School. At where? At Riverdale High School. In Here? Tennessee. Yeah. What he the was hell? Offensive coordinator, according to his Wikipedia page. That was in 2015. It's been a minute. What are you talking about? Here? Riverdale High School in Memphis? I don't, where, I don't, we have a Riverdale High School in Memphis? Wait, he did? He's in Murfreesboro. Oh. Okay. Oh, well, like, stands to reason. That, that, okay, <laughs> stands to reason. He went. I'm sorry. He went he, to MDSU, right? He went back to. Yeah, yeah. He went. So he went back to his college town. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure enough, Kelly Holcomb. Yeah, Blue Raiders. He he is. Uh, he was a color commentator on the Blue Raider Radio Network. How about that, Kelly Holcomb? Who knew? Huh. Some blast from the past. Kerwin Bell. That's impossible. I want to do more deep dives of Houston Texans quarterbacks. So, uh-huh. <laughs> I want to go oh, back I was and look out. at all the I mean, Houston I mean, Texans obviously the Carr brother. Yeah. But, I mean, you're getting. It TJ, gets, it TJ gets, Yates. Oh, yeah. There's there's about a five-year span. Mallet. It gets dark. <laughs> yeah. Ryan Mallett. Yeah. Rest in peace. He just passed away, like, this year, right? Yeah. Ryan Mallett. Yeah. Ryan Mallett and TJ Yates. AJ McCarron was on that roster. He played one game. Oh, wow. Terod Taylor played six games. 
the How many teams does Tyrod Taylor play for? That'll be that'll be one of your NFL notes someday. Seriously. Tyga. Well, now it's what's his name, right? It's uh, that Tommy DeVito. Oh, Danny DeVito. Which, I love by the word. way, Tommy DeVito, isn't that the name of Pesci's character See, exactly. in Goodfella? It is his name. It is his name, yeah. How is Tyrod Taylor? get your way, shine box. How is Tyrod Taylor 34 years old? Cap, he's like 54. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. There's Didn't no the way. Chargers trainer like stab him in the heart? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That happened. That's how Herbert got his start. That's why he's cursed. Let's see. Hold on now. He has played for the Ravens, the Bills, the Browns, the Chargers, the Texans, the Giants. Six. Not as many as I thought. That's still a lot for a. I mean, I think he's like played for all those. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. So it's a lot to have played for six teams. Like, I actually gotten in the game for six different teams. Yeah. Hmm. Feels like Dobbs is a new Tyrod. He got moved yesterday, right? He's gonna yeah. start for who, Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're starting the uh, they're starting the rookie this weekend. I can't yeah. remember. They what the can't kid's start. Name is. Uh, Who do they play again? What? The Vikings. Is it the Falcons? Yeah, because I, I picked up the Falcons defense in fantasy because I thought Will Levis and that backfired. Yeah. But I'm gonna keep them. I'm gonna keep them because that the Vikings dude's a little BYU quarterback. The big actually the biggest <laughs> the biggest news of yesterday, and it did kind of go on. The trade deadline happened, and it, bro, Aaron Rodgers is for real coming back this year oh. in December. He's coming back. I like, saw that. He's their GM the said he's in. going to play. I'm they, like, dude, they said he went to Narnia. Yeah. He went to Narnia? Yeah, got his, got his Achilles <laughs> fixed. I was like, yeah, why what? didn't I go to Narnia? I know, you should have gone to what Narnia. What if he comes back and looks like it's nothing had happened? It'll be so. It'll be the weirdest thing to happen to the Achilles industry. Uh, <laughs> like, everybody's going to start doing it. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. every athlete's going to start doing it. Also, the worst thing ever it. to happen in modern medical science. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Also, I, yeah. So the Aaron Rodgers haters will not like it. Oh, no. 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 I just had a friend who just tore his Achilles, and he was weighing whether to have surgery or not to have surgery and he ended up that's that's the big thing in the Achilles world right now. yeah like do you need to have surgery even and I wondered if Aaron Rodgers would have surgery and he did yeah or he says he did um but they they all think he has stem cell injections and all the rich people stuff helping D- him. did yours feel fine yeah. now not I wouldn't say fine do you bo- does it bother you yeah like I'm trying to do the um St. Jude 5k because it's within a year. Like, all the doctors say, oh, you can't be recovered until a year. And I was like, okay, so I'll, so try th- to, I'll th- sign up for a 5K What's that, 10 three miles? miles? Yeah, 3.2. 3. And 3. right now I can do, like, 2.6, but I need, like, 48 hours recovery afterwards. But when I you're walking really around, bad. do you notice that you tore your Achilles? Mm-hmm. You yeah. still, it, like, it never, like, it's always, like, in your yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah, Especially going down curbs, stairs of any kind, weird side-to-side movements. Yeah. 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 Barefoot at home. Yeah. Sometimes I'll just wear sneakers in the house if it's like a day where it hurts. It's when the still, weather flares up. Yeah. I hate that I've become oh, that person. Oh god. Ugh. Yep. But yeah, no, it's it's the it's the worst. Yeah. Like the worst. I would not wish that. It's on. always there with you. Yeah. It's always. always there. It is. Like this is. I have boots on right now. Yeah. This is my first time having a shoe over my Achilles. Because I'm trying since it out. Since you tore it? Since I tore it, yeah. Wow. Killer boots. Yeah. Yeah. Have fun in New York. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for coming in. All right. Thanks to Jessica Benson. Thanks to John Rose across the glass. Uh, tonight, 8 o'clock. Hopefully everything's smooth at the broadcast. Aren't you all on 7.30? Grizz Aren't Jazz. the pre- pregame 7.30? Yeah. 8 o'clock tip? Okay. Yep. Grizz Jazz. That's right. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Until then, we go.